So I've been asked to speak a little bit about what it's like to prepare to go to a Sundance. And it makes me think of how I get out my dresses and lay them out on the bed. I have four dresses that I sewed by hand. I have a yellow one for the East Day, which is the first day of the dance. I have a blue one for the South Day, the second day of the dance. I have, and these are long dresses. I have a white one for the North Day, which is actually the third day, and then a red one for the West Day, uh, which is actually the final day, because we like to finish the dance in red for the red people, um, the red man, the red woman. And those dresses symbolize years of fasting and sacrificing and praying to me. And the idea of how you prepare and how you are being bathed, if you will, in the different lights. For people who believe in uh, the chakra system, for instance, it, it helps you to ground your experience when you think about the directions on, on the medicine wheel, for instance. and the movement of life and that everything that is is also in movement and flow and to be part of that flow. So as we prepare for the Sundance we're also uh, washing our shawls and um, I also get my husband's skirt ready. He, he doesn't dance but he does carry the buffalo skull in in the procession that starts and ends each day of the dance. And I get my pipe ready Sometimes I put my pipe into the stream. There's a spring near my home, a freshwater spring, and I sometimes leave it there for four days to just have it nicely cleaned and blessed by the good Mother Earth before I take it up because I'll be sharing my pipe, be packing it every day for four days, and in the rounds of the dance, we pass our pipes out to the people and they smoke them. We don't smoke the pipe during the dance. And I'll also get my fan ready. Uh, that's another part of what a sun dancer needs because we're not only fanning ourselves while we're out there in the hot sun, but we fan our fellow dancers in the line with us as we go through the dance day after day, the four days. Another thing I'll be getting out and looking at again is my medallion. I have a beautiful star bead medallion done by Barbara Calderon, who's a wonderful beater that lives in Pavanaugh. And, um, we need to uh, bring all of our things and be organized uh, because we're living, we'll be living in our tents for the four days of the ceremony. Um, as everybody prepares, they're also bringing with them the prayer flags that I always do mine on the first fast after the Sundance in October so those four colors of flags can hang in my home and every time I go in and out my door I'm reminded you're a Sundancer, remember the vows. And one of the things I'll, I also work on all year long are the prayer ties in a long string. Uh, we tie these with tobacco and small red cloth that I hang on the tree that will be up there each year. And anytime a friend is having trouble or something sad's happening, I put another prayer in that long string and then they'll be wrapped around the tree on tree day before the tree's put into the earth. But um, in preparing also, you uh, think about your vows. Uh, in, in the Sundance that I attend with William Nevin and Connie Nevin at El Sibuktuk, uh, which is a Mi'kmaq reserve near Rexton and Rishibuktu in Canada, the rules include once you have a pipe of never touching alcohol again, never touching recreational drugs of any kind again, and also taking a vow to have no enemies. This is this is really what they mean when they say we are all related. Um, some people have heard the term in Lakota language, metakuyasin. Um, in Mi'kmaq that, that phrase is om signogama. And it really means what it says. We are all related and the dance really forces you to live that way. Uh, we have Penobscot, Maliseet, uh, other tribes that dance with us as well as an Iranian friend named Shaheen and um, people from other states, people from all stripes, and it really forces you to face whatever residual racism or prejudice that you have and just to remember our common humanity and the, the pain and the difficulties that people deal with 
everything from unemployment to uh, depression and the struggles that we all have uh, no matter where we live, no matter whether we have financial worries or not. Uh, and just over the years of attending the Sundance, I've seen people make a very honorable struggle to do their work psychologically, spiritually, to really stay on a path and stay committed. And more and more things you learn and, and are revealed to you over the dance. Um, there are amazing healings every year. I remember one year I met a man named John who had a wooden leg who asked William if he could dance because he felt so grateful to be alive. And he gave William tobacco and asked for permission to dance. And William said, I think you've done enough. You know, you, you've even lost your leg. I think you've given enough. You, you don't have to dance. Uh, but John told me the story that um, about a year before then, he'd been sent home with a, a terminal colon cancer. He'd been told to get his paperwork in order because he didn't have long to live and it was inoperable. And he went to the medicine people in his, uh, his reserve and uh, they took him into the lodge and prayed with him and put him out on a fast. And on the third day of his four day fast, this plant, and he knew nothing about herbs, began communicating with him and it turned out to be a violet and it was sort of not like a Disney cartoon with the leaves moving but it was communicating to him spiritually I am the medicine that you need you need me three times a day you need me boiled up for this long with this much water and so he left some tobacco and took a little part of the plant to show it to the medicine people at the sweat lodge ceremony to complete his fast and they recognized that violet and they helped him learn how to prepare this tea, which he drank three times a day, and he continued to go to sweat lodge ceremonies almost every other day while he was healing. And when he went back to the hospital after three months in Canada where he was being treated, they couldn't find the cancer. And they were shocked, and they kept giving him the tests over and over. Where did the cancer go? The doctors didn't want to be proven wrong uh, that he had had incurable, inoperable colon cancer. And uh, actually, he had, John had felt it was not his time to go. This is a man of maybe 44 years old. And it turns out that it was his life purpose to actually inspire the Canadians in that particular hospital to start up an alternative medicine uh, council and committee and to investigate this. Um, and those are the kinds of stories you hear at the Sundance. Uh, those of us who are dancing are not allowed to speak to any of the um, support dancers, or not, excuse me, the supporters of the dancers, their families and friends, uh, while we're dancing. There is a, a tobacco round barrier uh, that protects the dancers. We're not allowed to look in the eyes of the people even when we give them our pipes because we're in a, a sacred space. We're in the spirit world for those four days, especially the fasters. But I would encourage everyone to try and attend a Sundance. A good book to read might be Michael Hull's book called Sundancing. Um, but since you'll never be able to see a movie or a video about the Sundance, you'll have to go there in person. Thank you for listening. Om Sig No Gamak.